It just updated, uh, I think it's yesterday, from uh, 20.04 to uh, 20.04.1. So uh, we are using the newest one. So please download the newest one. I draw my virtual box. First, I would like to create a net network. Then I will create two virtual machines, one for Windows uh, Server and the other one for Ubuntu. How to create uh, the net network? Go to this, click this tools, this uh, references pops up. Then you see uh, here is a net uh, network. Then you can create uh, the net network. I, I created a one in the previous uh, course. I delete this one and I show you how to create it again. It's quite simple. You just uh, create this icon to add new net network. You can rename this one. I just leave it as the default name. And now the network CIDR, I would like to change it. Change it to uh, 10.20. Dot thirty dot zero forward slash twenty four and disable IPv six and support DHCP. Okay, that's it. The net network and I click OK. Then I click OK. This uh, my uh, watch box uh, manager is a little bit older. Maybe there was some problem. I suggest you always use the latest uh, stable one. So I need to uh, close and run it again. You see, my version number is. Uh, 6.1.10, and the newest one is 6.1.12, maybe. I don't remember exactly. So I need to close and run again. To make sure that uh, that network is uh, running. Right now, I will create the first uh, virtual machine. Create new virtual machine for the Ubuntu. So I type, let's taste, just say it, uh, U2004. So Ubuntu with the version number 20.04.01. I, I just uh, uh, omit that 0 0.01. And this uh, folder, the virtual machine folder, when you choose your external USB driver, actually, this location is my external USB driver. I can show you, you see it here. It's under this uh, seed labs external USB drive and under this uh, VMS. In this morning, I just created a three seed virtual machine, seed one, seed two, seed three. Now you see that I still have a Windows Server. Then I created it before. I will remove it later. So choose the folder on your external USB or on your local computer. Here is uh, Linux. I want to create a Ubuntu Linux. So it's a Ubuntu uh, 64 bit. Then the memory, I uh, allocated a six, uh, six uh, gigabytes. Six gigabytes uh, is how, how much? Is six times uh, one zero uh, two four. So we don't need a uh, exactly. The number. Uh, create a virtual hard disk uh, now. Then we create a uh, great start create. You see, uh, it's, uh, it will be saved at this location under that uh, external USB drive. Here, the file size, the file size of the virtual disk, we take it to uh, 100 gigabytes. You see, virtually you can uh, use at most uh, two terabytes. So we allocate our disk dynamically. So it only allocate the space when it need. Actually, after our installation, the space it takes uh, is quite small. And we will see it later. Now we can uh, create this virtual machine. Before we start installation, before we start installation, we change some uh, settings. 
Here the settings in the advanced, I would enable the shared clipboard between the virtual machine and uh, my host machine. Then I can copy stuff from host machine to virtual machine or back. Then uh, the drag and drop, I also enable by direction, but uh, they are not enabled until we install the gesture addition. So what other options here leave the as as a default description leave it as default as a default in the systems here you can see uh, I would like to change this pointing device to PS2 mouse is publishing machine is not your tablet tablet. For example if you want to design or divide program for for smartphone, you can use that USB tablet. The processor, if you have more processor, you can increase to two. I just leave it as one. Acceleration, leave it as default. Display as default. Storage, I already have this, uh, created this virtual hard disk. Audio as default. Network, this one we need to change. We need to attach our virtual machine to the net network. And the name is the one we just created, net network. Here in uh, the advanced mode, we would like to allow the Premier, Premier skills mode. Then we can sniffer the network traffic. Usually I would like to uh, refresh this uh, MAC address several times to, to let VirtualBox to generate a random MAC address for me. Serial port, ports uh, lived uh, as default, USB default, shared folder. Uh, we will create a shared folder later. And I click OK. Now you can check the summary. Here the place I modified. This one, net network is named uh, net network, and uh, some other modification does not show up. For example, that uh, pointing device, right? Not show up here. Okay, now we have a bare bone machine. How do we install Ubuntu? We need to, as, just as you install Ubuntu on real computer, first we need to insert a CD or DVD into the our, our DVD drive. So go to the storage. Here this is the CD drive. Currently is empty. I need to uh, add a add an image. So I choose a disk file. Now I choose the from uh, home folder downloads. I use the newest one just released yesterday. 20.04.1. Click open. Now it's uh, inserted into this uh, virtual DVD drive. Click OK. And now we can power up and follow the follow the guide and install this uh, Ubuntu. Click start. It will take some time. my virtual machine popped up on another screen. So I drag it here. Now it asks uh, us, select startup disk, please select uh, select a virtual optical disk file or physical optic, physical optic drive containing a disk to start your new virtual machine. Here you see you, there is a Webox guest uh, edition. This one we will use it uh, later after we installed uh, Ubuntu. Currently, I use this uh, newest Ubuntu Mate, and I click Start. Now you see I cannot uh, move my virtual machine. This is a problem of my uh, virtual box version. So I need to click this uh, drive control, then I can move it. 
Uh, it says you don't want to check the file system. I don't want to check the file system because we checked. Uh, oops, it's uh, finished. We we checked with a um, uh, hash code. It should have. It should uh, have no problem. On a real computer, may uh, ask you whether you want to check your CD or DVD media. Usually, you, you allow it uh, to check the CD or DVD. Now you see it's uh, put it up. The installation is uh, quite straightforward and uh, simple. It only because I installed many times. That's why I feel, feel it's simple. I do feel many times when I change some options. This is how do we learn technology. Just try it again and again until you succeed. If you want to learn something new, just try to modify those options. Here, we click install Ubuntu Mate directly. And the interface language is certainly we use English. Install Ubuntu Mate. The keyboard layout, English, certainly. Continue. If you want to use other languages, just change it by yourself. System installation take a, takes a lot of time. So I suggest you, after you successfully installed your operating system, please make a backup and save it uh, somewhere. And you see also see the network is uh, connected. But I'm not sure whether it's a, uh, uh, you can check the information, connection information to see whether it's really, it really works. Here you see uh, the IP address is not right, right? It's not the IP address I set in the net network. So this is a problem for my version version box. Hope you don't have this problem in your newest uh, version box. I just uh, close it, choose a normal installation. Uh, third party software for graphics, for example, if you have uh, some NVIDIA graphic cards, then you can choose this one. Because we install a virtual machine, you just use the default normal installation and uh, click continue. I think it will take about uh, 20 minutes to a uh, half an hour to complete. Uh, we don't want to waste uh, our time to wait, so we can uh, check our website. To learn what we need to uh, prepare. For example, after we installed this Ubuntu Mate, we update the system and install some common tools. Then we need to install the Java environment. But before we install the Java environment, we I suggest you to install this uh, that is a SDK mine because we want we want to install two versions of JDK on our system. So we will use this one. Oh yes, it is here. The 
HD command is used to manage several versions of JDK. Here, the erase uh, how this can install want to make is okay. Just, just uh, click install now. For example, if you want to learn more, you can click this uh, advanced features to see what are the other advanced features. For example, use uh, LVM with new want to make installation. Uh, erase disk use ZFS. This is experimental, so it's not suggested. And uh, what's uh, LVM? Uh, we will learn later in our forensic topics. So just choose the default one. With the LVM, you can dynamically resize those uh, partitions after the installation. So install now. Now it will drive the changes to the disk is okay, continue. You, when you install your system, please uh, read all the messages. Through this way, you will learn more. Because I have practiced uh, many times and uh, read those uh, instructions uh, carefully. We have the central time. I want to add a name, and the name is uh, Forensics, uh, and uh, PNW, to the password. I don't want to type my password every time, so log in automatically. In your real time, or in your real world, please, uh, Type your password every time. Here, just for lab demo, so I, I would like to make it as simple as possible. Now it will take some time to finish the installation. And we can check how to in install this uh, SDK mine. Always check the official website because these uh, instructions, I collect them in the last uh, semester, the last offering. Maybe now it's updated, so the best way, always check the official website, the SDK mine. From the official website, you can see the lots of information, install JDK, SDK, usage, how to use it, and the, some uh, explanation of this software development uh, kit manager. SDK mine is a tool for manage parallel versions of multiple SDK or most uh, Unix-based uh, systems. It provides a convenient command line interface and API for installing, switching, removing, and listing candidates. Formerly, it has a name called GVM, and it was inspired by the very useful RBM, RB, MV tools used at large by the Ruby community. So this tool is used by the Ruby com community. I don't uh, know Ruby. It's a server-side scripting language. So if you want to program with Ruby, you can check its official website. How do, you, how do we get started? So you can check this stuff. I, go, I like to check the usage. So here is the usage, how to install the SDK latest stable version. Use the SDK, install Java, then it will install the, this way, by default, you, we didn't specify anything, it installs the latest stable Java. But for forensic tools, we need a earlier, a older version. So that's why we need us. But uh, uh, here, for this slow skit and autopsy, it use a, uh, older Java SDK is uh, eight something. Yeah, and this bug is uh, tracked. It use a newer Java version eleven something. Here you can see uh, how to use it. It has a detailed explanation for a specific version. We install it like this. 
with a version number install uh, local versions to specify the uh, address and how to remove a version how to list the available candidates we use HTK uh, list here you can see the way to list list the, the available candidates here scholar is a is a functional program language. It, it's similar to Java, but a functional program language is quite different from our normal uh, program language. List version SDK, list groovy, for example, if you want to list this one, then you will have seven. And you can see SDK, it can be used to manage not only a Java SDK, it can also be used to manage Scholar, and that uh, group groovy and so if you want to find the current version use this way the environment environment uh, command stk in in it so what does it mean when we need to read through this stuff how do we upgrade the offline mode self update and update how to flash Okay, there are lots of stuff. It's, it's still uh, installed. Then we can uh, go back. This is a SDK used to manage uh, two versions of Java SDK. On our uh, Ubuntu. After we installed this uh, SD command, we use this SD command to install Java 8 and Java 11. Once they are done, then we install the source kit. Before we will install a software specific to a specific version of Java SDK, you need to switch the SDK first using the SD command. Here, for example, uh, this. Uh, SDK, we use uh, this uh, SDK default to switch to switch the S Java SDK to this uh, version. Then we we can use this to do apt install the test disk. After that, we download Autopsy and install Autopsy and uh, install Sluice Kit. When that one is done, we switch the SDK to install the bulk extractor. We, we, we use SDK default Java, switch to the 11 version, then install some required libraries. Use git clone the bulk extractor and uh, build it and run it. How do we set the correct Java JDK before running a program. This is the installation. After the installation, we want to run it. Before you run it, make sure which uh, SDK version you need. For example, for autopsy, we need JDK 8, Java 8. So you need to switch to JDK 8 first, then run the program. If you want to run this uh, PE viewer, we switch to Java 11. Now, there are new uh, instructions. So we need to open this official website to see how to install. The sluice kit and an autopsy. Here is this open source digital forensics. And you see the latest uh, version 4.15.0 released. Here is our autopsy. You can see the features. Well, now let's check. Okay, now uh, this installation is uh, completed. So we just restart now. We need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. You see, it takes me a half an hour to complete this installation. 
remove the installation media. Here it looks like a, everything is also re is removed because this one is grayed out. I cannot click it. So I just press enter. It will take a little bit of time to pull up. It's logging in automatically because I set that automatic login during the installation. Okay, this is my Ubuntu virtual machine. In your installation, please choose the last name as the computer name and the first name as the username. So that way I can identify the virtual machine is yours. Now we need to uh, configure the network to make sure the network worked. First, we can check the connection information. You see, this is not right. So we need to um, modify the uh, configuration. So I would like to disconnect first and set the IP address manually. Double click this. Uh, Red connection one. All the option, options just leave that as default. So I suggest you to read them carefully. I only change, uh, change I only change IPv4 settings because IPv6 is disabled, so leave it there. Now IPv4, we want to set the manually, add the IP address. We use the IP address uh, 10.20.30. Now we have two which machine, right? One is the Ubuntu dot, one is Windows Server. So how do we allocate an address to our to which machine? I would like to use a Ubuntu, uh, maybe a, let's say a 100. And that uh, Windows Server, choose 200. Then the network, net mask, type 24. And the gateway, the gateway is set by which box? one. So for that uh, CID or, or for that network ID 10.20.30.0.1 is the gateway, Point zero is the network ID. And the DS server, I would like to use the gateway server as a forward the forward DNS server, 10.20.30.1. And I also I want to add uh, to Google DNS server, 8.8.8.8, and 8.8.8, uh, oops, 0.4.4. Then uh, click OK, it's here. Save it. Oh, is it saved? And I close it, connect again. Uh, okay, well, oh, sorry, what's your hand? Double click the VM set to use the uh, network. I, I think it's uh, the VM. Double check the VM set. Okay, we can uh, double check the VM setting to see where the net network uh, I set it correctly. Here, we double check this one. Net network is is does connect to the net network. Here, now we check uh, where the net network configuration is good. Here, the net network, you see the CIDR is good. Ten point twenty point thirty point zero and uh, four slash twenty four. So, the connection there's no problem. So we also need to check whether this one is connected to that net network. Yes, it is. So, which means my setting, there's no problem in my setting. Double check, so it's uh, good. So the problem can only come from this uh, version of virtual box. All right, now I connected again, I checked the connection information. You see this time the connection information is good. 
now I can open a terminal window. Just right click, uh, right click the desktop, open a, a terminal. Type CD to come to the home folder. This uh, tilde means the home folder. If we want to run a command as a administrator, use sudo for the command. So I would like to the if you cannot follow this uh, video, uh, I I will record this video. So I will post it later on YouTube. And currently, I strongly suggest you. Uh, to take some notes to understand each step, this uh, will be uh, more helpful. So here the settings is uh, is quite uh, straightforward for that uh, settings. If we just check the connect information, here you see the settings, the IP address, the default gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, tertiary DNS. Okay, we pin our gateway first. You see it worked. Then we pin Google to see whether it can access the internet. You see it's good. So our virtual machine can access the internet, internet now. So the network setting uh, finished. Now we need to update our virtual machine for those uh, command. So the best way would be uh, before we update it, we need to install the the guest audition first, to so we can max we can turn it to full screen and uh, enhance the performance. Otherwise, it it, uh, it will be constrained to this small screen. So we need to install this guest audition CD image first. But uh, I don't think it uh, will work. It will need some uh, basic tools. So we need to uh, run that basic tools first to install those basic tools. Now I open the Firefox inside my virtual machine so I can copy and paste those, uh, copy and paste those uh, uh, component website. If I copy it from here, you will see it. it's very likely it will not work. Need the control V, you see it does not work. So, you, until we install the guest, uh, guest edition tour, the copy and paste it will work. So, we just type it here github.com forward slash UFI DOM forward slash and ITS. This is uh, 452, right? Go to the labs, come to lab 01, and uh, scroll down here. I run this command, just copy it and uh, paste in the terminal window. Type the command or type the password. And this update, it also takes some time. It's so downloading some packages. Okay, this one complete. The second command, upgrade. Tab yes, now you see the downloads of lots of packages. And not that much because uh, this uh, the newest release just released yesterday. Now, even it's released yesterday, you see there are still some packages that are updated. When this is done, we need to install some build essentials, for example, GCC compilers, uh, CMake, make These tools are used for. For compiling and a git used for download those uh, for example download those tools and a 
P7Zip-4 is that a 7Z. We can use it to, to compress and uh, un uncompress our cows. P7Zip-4. This build is essential. It will install some build tools, especially if you want to build uh, drivers. For example, uh, this guest tool, it needs tools. It's uh, it served as a hardware hardware driver. So we need uh, those tools to build it. Okay, when it's uh, updating, we can continue uh, exploration on this autopsy. Autopsy is a digital forensics platform and a graphic interface to the through kit. So you see, they put together this through kit is a command line tools. This autopsy is a GUI interface and other digital Forensic tools is used by law enforcement, military, corporate examiners to investigate what happened on a computer. You can even use it to recover photos from your camera's memory card. For example, if you unfortunately if your hard drive corrupted, you can also use this one to recover your documents, your photos, and so on. Here are some commercial support you can uh, compare this uh, basic technology. The autopsy was designed to be intuitive, out of the box. Installation is easy, and the wizards get you through every step. All results are found in a single tree. You can see this intuitive page for more details. So you can you can right click, open a new new page, so you can see the Intuitive introduction. Okay, it's done. Now we install those tools. You click it uh, three times, it will select the whole line. You click it uh, twice, it selects the word. Oops. Yeah, you click twice, it select the, the word. Here you click the middle button, it will paste here. Oops, it's an upgrade, I didn't copy it. So, triple click, triple click. Oops. Copy it, click the middle button, paste it here. And I type yes. Uh, this should be fast. Okay, it's done now. We can install the guest edition. Here, this update. Do do you want to re restart now? Yes, it's bad to restart now. Okay, from this uh, device's manual, insert guest additions uh, CD image. This one, I don't want to uh, pop up. But here you see that a uh, guest addition CD, when I insert it into the virtual CD drive, it uh, runs automatically and pop up this one. Just click uh, can run it. And I click run it. Because it's an uh, install drive, so we need a uh, administrator account, type the password. Oh, 
now you see the co copying additional in dollar modules. Here, did you see this line? Building the modules for the kernel. That's why we need to install that build essential and those kernel tools. Otherwise, if you will directly install these guest additions, it will stop here and ask you to install those tools. It will take a little bit of time to complete. Okay, now it's uh, completed, we need to restart. Close. Here there's some uh, error happen. If this uh, made settings dimmer, it's okay, just close it. If you don't want this uh, help job, we can uh, choose a close, actually that is a uh, the select box, but I, I, I cannot see it. When I boot it up, it will turn to full screen after I install this guest, this guest edition tools. Then I can see that uh, checkbox and clear it. Currently, I just close it. Here you see this uh, guest edition. ISO, right click, eject this uh, ISO file. And reboot. We start. When it's restarting, I can choose a full screen mode. Did you see it automatically uh, take all, all my full screen? And now this time you see uh, this one, all them. Here this, uh, oops, I can see that, uh, just click down the same. Here, it looks, it uh, open here. Open welcome when I log on. I don't want to see it every time. But for you, if you are new to Ubuntu, I suggest you to read through this stuff, introduction, get started and so on. This is how you learn technology. Close. Okay, now uh, it looks good. I would like to uh, change the background. I don't like this uh, default background. So choose this, uh, for example, uh, let's say this one. Okay, looks nice. This is the Ubuntu machine. Now we want to install those tools. Those forensic tools, uh, before we install those forensic tools, uh, let's have a 10 minutes break. Now it's uh, 4.50. So we come back at a five, at a five and continue. And we are currently it's recording. The video is recording. And I will, after the class, I will post, uh, after some processing, I will post on YouTube. So you can follow the video and uh, complete the lab. During my demonstration, I strongly suggest you take some notes and uh, the most important thing, try to understand each step. Okay, let's uh, continue at uh, file. Feel free to have a break, 10 minutes. If you have any question during the break, please uh, post in the chat.
here is uh, still running. Let's just wait a little bit. This installation will not uh, affect we we download something. For Windows, it's uh, quite easy. You just download uh, the Windows uh, executable file and install it. We don't need to go through so many uh, steps. For example, uh, Windows, you just download this uh, 64 bit. If you today, most of uh, Windows are 64 bit, so you download this. Uh, this uh, installation file and uh, click and run in in the installation is quite straightforward. For Mac OS, you see uh, you follow similar commands like uh, Ubuntu. Okay, this done now. Uh, we can uh, go to that folder first. So if you missed some steps, you will get ahead. So please pay attention when you go through these uh, steps. Go to that folder first. Oops. The source code folder. Usually we save the source code to the same place for simplicity. Now it uh, clones a repository from GitHub. First, we build that uh, lab DE26 file, CD lab. Oops, let's type LS to see what is. So it's there, lab DE. Two five six. Then we run sudo. Actually, we can type a ls to see those files. You see that what gen dot sh, right? What gen dot sh and configure. Uh, the configure is will be generated by this what uh, gen dot sh. Sudo dot what gen dot sh. Tabs. Now you see uh, some files are generated. That is a configure is generated. Tab sudo dot configure. Then we run sudo make. Actually, this make we don't need uh, sudo. As they just uh, test tested, uh, is uh, better to follow their instruction. Now I don't know how long it will take. So we can uh, explore those tools when we are waiting. Here yeah, for Windows, you just only need to download this and install. If your host machine is Windows, then you will have this uh, autopsy. For that sluice kit, Autop autopsy is the GUI interface. If you want to download that uh, sluice kit, you want to run from command line. Let's see why is that sluice kit for Windows. So we'll go back, come to 
source kit, go to the download. Now for the download, you see this uh, Windows binary. So just download and install this uh, binary. And it's updated uh, at this time, January 24, 2020. Always use the latest uh, stable version. So download and install this one. Then your Windows installation of the source kit and then autopsy is done. The second uh, tool, bulk extract, bulk extractor, how do you install on Windows? This one is also quite straightforward. So we go to this uh, website first. Here is the bulk extractor. How do you install? Check the release. Use the latest uh, one here. The release this source code. So I, I didn't see that uh, executable file. One point four, one point five, point three. So we need to uh, check the document. Here it tells you how to build on Linux. You see these uh, triple commands, configure, make, make, install. We will need uh, to do how to test the configuration. I didn't see it says a, a Windows here. So download Windows installer and come here. It says must be built on Fedora. So Windows version of Bulk Extractor must be built on Fedora. Fedora is another distribution of Linux. We don't want to build it because the installer is already provided. If you want to build by yourself, you can follow the Follow their instruction. Here, for detailed instruction on installing and building, follow this Wikipedia web page. Let's see whether the, that one complete. It's okay. It's complete. Now we can use sudo make install. Okay, it's installed. Then we run, uh, we want to we build the second. Uh, library, cd, user, source, lab, half, and uh, you can type ls to a look again. So again, we need to run that auto gen first to generate the configuration file. And now we can run that uh, configure. Then we run the make. Okay, it will take some time. Let's uh, continue our exploration. Here the windows, you right click, find the exe file, is this one, you know, 64 bit, right? Bulk extract 64.exe. And also, you see the bulk extract of Windows install.exe, there are only 20 megabytes. So, you are suggest to run this one. Maybe that's uh, the installation file, just compressed this uh, executable file. So you can download this and install to see whether this is installed. And there are user manuals. So you can check the user manual to, to see how to use this bulk extractor. And there are also some uh, examples. If you want to improve this program, you can check this programmer's manual. Here, user's manual, you can see a uh, screw down uh, how to use it. And also, you see 
the user manual is not uh, updated. So you can go through to see how to use it. Work example is even older. We can check this. Check these cases. And later we will follow these uh, manuals to practice. All right, this uh, are the two tools you need to install on Windows if your host machine is Windows. And the installation is uh, quite intuitive and easy. Just download the .exe file and install it. So three .exe file you need the bulk extract of Windows installer and that uh, through skit Windows binary and that autopsy Windows 64 bit uh, .exe file. Then your the forensic tools on your Windows is done. Okay, I just um, uh, make it, then I use sudo make install. Okay, it's installed. I'll come back to that uh, instruction here. Now we need to, uh, this uh, image magic, we can install this latest uh, image magic. Double get. Now you see that this is sudo is uh, really we don't need, but it it looks like the author of this instruction is a little bit lazy. Okay, extracted your type LS to see what it is. Is here image magic. Right? So we need to CD into that image magic. You press the type key, it will complete automatically. Here the author user star because he didn't want to type all these uh, numbers. But we can use the type key to complete automatically. So do dot configure, before I run configure type LS to see the stuff, the, the configure is here. So do dot forward slash uh, configure and a dash dash with hacker equal yes because we just installed that hacker library the configuration is quick the make the takes some time So do make. Uh, I have a suggestion. If you want to learn more, please read those output by yourself. Now this make it will take some time, so we can continue our exploration. Okay, we just uh, completed how to install, how to download and install the forensic tools on your Windows. I think most of you use Windows. So you can download them and install them now because we need to wait uh, some time. Okay, for uh, Mac, for Mac you need to follow the similar, follow these uh, similar commands, but I never have a Mac, so I don't know. You need to try by yourself and solve the problems you met by yourself. Here you, we can find out which uh, Java SDK we need. Install the Bellsoft Java 8 GRE and uh, Java FX8 distribution and set the Java home, how to do that. The Bellsoft distribution bundles OpenJDK and OpenJFX. Other distributions we have tried, it tried either don't bundle this one or don't, bund don't include all necessary uh, binaries. Right. For example, this adopt open JDK, Amazon, Quito. So this is very nice though. At least also they try to try to work so we can follow. Here, now the Parasoft 
they just uh, download from from its uh, official website. We don't want to do this way because we have a SD command. We use SD command to install this uh, BellSoft Java 8-4. So we need to check whether it's there. SDK man list Java. Oops, that no SDK man, just SDK. So we need to check the bare soft is here. The bare soft. We didn't see the bare soft for this uh, bare soft Java 8-4. And also we have some uh, other number here, so this minor version number. This is the FX, as the discussed. So the FX, lab, lab FX, open, uh, open JFX. So now I have a challenge. How do I use a uh, SD command to install this uh, BellSoft? Using the author's way, then we cannot uh, run that uh, bulk extractor successful or manage this, uh, this or manage this uh, JDK efficiently. So I need to figure out this bare soft dash Java 8 dash 4 dash AMD 6. As it uh, discussed here, it includes this open JDK and open JFX. So we, we can uh, make a, a guess which one is if here. We use the this uh, latest one, this one I suppose is uh, FX that uh, includes that uh, OpenJFX and this one includes uh, OpenJDK, so we need to install these two. We can copy this one and use uh, that uh, command how to install it. Use this command. Uh, SDK here. SDK install Java followed by that uh, version number and the vendor number. So it would be this one. We need to copy this one. Let's check our, our building. It's, it's still building. So we can copy this one. Open a new uh, tab. Use a SDK. Install. Which SDK we need? The Java SDK, because the SDK man used to manage several SDK. Java SDK, Groovy SDK, you can check on its home, home web page. Now I paste that. Uh, version and uh, this last string, but this last string is not like this. Here, for example, those Zulu, Zulu you see it's uh, appendix is dash Zulu, but for this uh, bare software, it's appendix is this, uh, this uh, lib or CA. I uh, install this uh, first. I, I still need to install this one. The first one open a, what's that one? Open a, a FX. Second one open JDK. Here, the first one for the open JFX. The second one for open JDK. Installing. Uh, this uh, is still building. Alright, this is done. Now I need to install the second one. 
the open uh, JDK. Here, it uh, use this way to set the Java Home, export Java Home, you use this uh, stuff. Because we use this, uh, whether we want to set it as default, we have yes. Because we use a uh, command to manage this environment, so we don't need to use this uh, stuff. We can try to see whether it's set or not. Echo Java Home is not set, so we can set that uh, variable, the environment variable with this uh, command. You may need to log out and back again after setting this one before autopsy, before this one can see the value. So I need to uh, set this one. But before I search, I need to check where the location is exactly this this location because we use this uh, SD command to set it up. LOS user LIP JVM. Now you see we don't have a JVM. JVM. There is no JVM. If you just uh, follow this uh, command blindly, uh, we will fail. So where is the, our JDK? Our JDK is installed inside that uh, HD command. It's uh, on here. BIN, opposite, I don't know where, where the, it is installed. It's not this place. So we need to check the HD command manual to see where is that one? Another way we can check uh, which Java to see its location. Okay, its location is is still under the hidden folder. It's under the hidden folder. Candidates, Java, current, yeah, and Java. So our set will be a little bit easier. Here it says very soft, it is set to that uh, folder. We only need to set to this BIN, BIN folder. Before we set that BIN folder, we can check what's inside that folder. SDK man, candidates, Java, current, BIN. You see all the Java stuff here. But here you didn't. Uh, Use a PIN after that. Uh, that one. Let's see. Here, this is a. You can consider this a home folder of the current default Java. Java home home folder. So we need to export. Java home equals now. We need to equal this this one, equal to this one. But usually we need to supply the full path. So it's better to use this, the full path, which means from the root or the absolute path. Copy and paste here. Then we can verify echo it should set. Okay, now it, it's set. Then we can install. After that, we can install the, the here is Mac OS, Java version. We can confirm the version of the Java by running this, uh, these commands. Here, let's check our building. The building is completed. So I need to make a sudo make install. Okay, the installation is uh, completed, which means uh, I complete. I complete these two libraries. I complete this uh, image magic, and I come to this uh, Bellsoft. I install this uh, 
Bellsoft uh, Java 8, then we come to here. So when you try by yourself, I suggest you uh, please pay attention to, to these steps. Java dash dash or just one dash version. So you see the version number 1.8.0, but you can check all oh, is newer than the versions. Just several days, all oh, is newer. This open, uh, the, this is the, the runtime, OpenJDK runtime environment and uh, the server, yes. Now we can install the source kit Java bindings. Adopted depends on a specific version of source kit. So make sure the versions match. You need the Java libraries of the source kit installed, which is not part of all packages, Linux installation, how do we install? They are downloaded from his website. We just uh, downloaded it right? in, in my download folder. We downloaded a CD to my download fo folder. You see that source kit. Also, you can check our version is also newer than this one. Newer than this one. So do apt install dot forward slash slow kit type the password type yes this is Linux install this uh, slow kit then we install autopsy the autopsy is the installation extracts the contents of this autopsy file to a folder open terminal and the CD into that folder, run this uh, setup. So we can, so here it is, autopsy is there. We can use 7z, x autopsy. X means extract, uh, extraction. That 7z we installed uh, before we install that uh, guest tools, guest auditions. Now you see this file is quite large, 872 megabytes you know, for zip file. So if it's unzip, it will be larger, much, much larger. Have that set up, then we can run the autopsy. Okay, tab areas. Oops. No, you, you see, I cannot tap my keyboard. My keyboard uh, frozen, and also I cannot uh, move anything. Oops. Okay, it, it just wait a uh, wait a little bit. Be patient. In this case, uh, don't uh, panic. Areas, you see that uh, extract autopsy is there, and when you check, it didn't say because the which number is different. Uh, we CD into that autopsy folder. Tabarius, here we see this stuff, why right? it's uh, so slow. We see this Unix underscore setup.sh. SH. Unix set, set up dot sh. Autopsy is non configured. You can execute this to start it. Here you see this way is not a, exactly. So we type bin uh, autopsy. Right? This one is different. Troubleshooting if you have any troubles like this. 
let's see whether we have troubles. Okay, this is what it looks like, but something looks uh, not right here. We check the error here. Caused by this uh, JavaFX application platform. And also we have an error here. It says uh, check you have this uh, JavaFX installed. So it looks like a, a, a that one is not the Java FX, so let's close this one. As it says, if you see those problem, Java FX not found. I need to go back to check my JDK here. This is Bearsoft, which one contains all those stuff? I uh, the machine. I think I found the problem. Is it rest part off and restart? Java dash version. Is this uh, 1.8? Uh, it looks good. I want to see what it is. Okay, it's under the Java current bin JDK. I want to use that uh, SD man to list that contains only the open JDK. So actually we don't need this one, we only need uh, this dot uh, fx. So we can use uh, SDK to remove that one. Let's see how to use remove. Help. We can use install and install list use default so let's uh, use SDK and install and install the candidate is uh, this candidate we uninstall this one this one does not contain the open JFX oops I need uh, for a uh, Java candidate version number Okay, it's uh, uninstalled. Then I need to uh, set default set uh, set this uh, JDK as the default JDK. Okay, we have this. Uh, is set to default JDK now. Let's uh, try to find uh, that uh, mi missed file. We can use a uh, ls sdk mine candidates Java current uh, you see this uh, stuff GRE lib ext okay now you see this uh, jf uh, xt dot jaw is here okay, now we need cd to download a folder uh, autopsy cd to autopsy we need to set up it uh, again. Let's see. Because this uh, place didn't change, so we don't need to run the setup again. We run the autopsy program. Yeah, the currently repository is uh, not loaded. Would you like to enable it? 
it will store information about all hashes and any files that you process. You can see, you can use this to ignore previous seen files and make connections between cases. Okay, this is a good sign. Click yes. Uh, okay, now you see our uh, autopsy uh, looks good. So this is the, what uh, normal running looks like. We can create uh, new forensic cases or open uh, existing forensic cases. Okay, that's it. So how to install autopsy. Now I want to switch to how to install bulk extract. First, I would like to restore previous sessions here. I want the stuff. I open it. Go to our lab. Find uh, that uh, how to install bulk extract. But before that, we need to install install JDK with the uh, FX so we can use that SDK list Java now this time we need to install uh, version 11.0.2 but again we would like to check his official website to see whether there are any updates the bulk extract let's uh, what is stuff? 